Hello, welcome to Forest Learn. In this video, we'll be discussing Lenz's Law, which is an important concept in electromagnetic induction. This video is part of a series or playlist of videos on the topic of induction. It directly follows the previous video in the series, where we discussed the concept of induced EMF and Faraday's Law. We'll pick up from where that video ended, so I strongly recommend you check that out first before returning to this especially if you're new to electromagnetic induction. Let's recap the puzzle I posed at the end of the previous video. By moving a conducting wire up and cutting across horizontal magnetic field lines, it's possible to induce an EMF and an induced current. So just to be clear, the white arrows here pointing up depict this thick conductor wire or rod that's moving up and cutting across these magnetic field lines shown in black. Due to the motion of this wire, an induced EMF develops across the ends of the wire. So one end becomes positively charged as electrons experience a magnetic force and move away from it towards the other end where they accumulate. This induced EMF results in a current, an induced current to flow around the circuit which is attached to the wire. That induced current is shown by these black arrows here. That induced current is what's responsible for the bulb lighting up. The question I posed at the end of the previous video was, where is the light and thermal energy coming from as the bulb glows and warms up? We know from the principle of conservation of energy that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only changed or transferred from one store to another. But it's not obvious what transfer of energy is going on here. To resolve this conundrum, let's think about the following. Consider the induced current that flows in the wire moving in the magnetic field. So that's shown by these black arrows here. Now, try using Fleming's left hand rule to see if you can figure out what it would actually feel like if you were moving the wire upwards with your hand. Please pause the video and have a think about this and unpause it when you're done. What you should hopefully have found is that there would be a downward magnetic force acting on the wire as you move the wire up. Make sure you can verify this by using Fleming's left hand rule. So if you take your left hand and point your first finger, which represents the magnetic field, to the right, because the magnetic field lines are pointing from left to right, and take your second finger, which represents the direction of the current, to point in the direction of these black arrows here, sort of away from you, you should find that your thumb should be pointing downwards as a result. And that's the direction of the magnetic force that acts on the wire. So if you tried to move the wire up, the wire would experience an opposing force downwards. As a result, you'd have to continue to exert an equal upwards force to counterbalance the downwards magnetic force to keep the wire moving up at a constant speed. We're assuming here, by the way, that the wire has negligible weight, that we don't need to worry about it. Therefore, you'd be doing work on the wire because you'd be applying a force over a distance. Remember, work equals force times distance when the force acts parallel to the displacement of the object. And remember too, that work done in physics means a transfer of energy. This is how the energy puzzle is resolved. As you move the wire up at a constant speed and do work, there is a transfer of energy from the chemical energy store in your body to the electrical energy store of the moving charges, which then gets converted to thermal and radiation energy stores as the bulb heats up and emits light. What we've just been discussing is related to Lenz's law. Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF is such as to oppose the change that caused it. This is an important and useful law of electromagnetic induction, and we'll be discussing it again and again in this series of videos. What does Lenz's law actually mean? Remember, for an EMF to be induced across the ends of the wire, the wire needs to be moved up, cutting magnetic field lines in the process. This is the change that causes the induced EMF. But what's meant by the direction of the induced EMF? We can think of the direction of the induced EMF as being the direction in which the induced 
current flows in the wire, which is from negative to positive. And as we discussed earlier, from Fleming's left-hand rule, this leads to a downward magnetic force on the wire, which tries to oppose the change, i.e. the upward motion of the wire. What would happen if the wire were moved down instead of up? And what would Lenz's law have to say about it? Please pause the video and have a think about this by yourself, and unpause the video when you're done. If the wire were moved down, an induced EMF would develop in the opposite sense to before, leading to an induced current to flow in the direction shown, sort of towards us. From using Fleming's left-hand rule again, we see that an upward magnetic force now acts on the wire, which tries to oppose the motion downwards. The downwards motion is what causes the induced EMF in the first place. So we see again, in accordance with Lenz's law, that the direction of the induced EMF tries to oppose the change that caused it in the first place. As alluded to earlier, Lenz's law is closely related to the principle of conservation of energy. In a sense, Lenz's law is just an inevitability or consequence of conservation of energy. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the Forest Learn channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you soon.